So watching my Ford Boy and Exalus 715, they make it look really easy to free hop gears. However, it's not quite as easy as you might expect, but it is easy if you follow a couple small rules. Follow along and learn with me as I go, as I make a thread dial indicator for my lathe. The first step, as you know, is to take the tool post off and put on your bushing that you're going to free hob on. Your clearance is going to be a standard clearance for a bushing. And like most machining operations, you're going to need to make sure that your setup is rigid so that there's no frequencies or vibrations that are set up while you're doing this. Now I'll put on the blank. And then we'll tighten up the top with the retaining nut that holds the whole assembly down. Now the gear is going to have 24 teeth in total. And this gear will be running on an inch and a quarter by four threads per inch. So good old eBay, I picked up an Acme by that size and I'm going to free hob it with that. Now my first attempt at this, I just put everything together and just kind of hoped that it was going to work. However, I learned a couple things out of this all. Firstly, I totally forgot about the Acme tap being tapered. This is important because if you don't put it in the right spot on the tap, you're not actually going to be running on the full thread. You'll still be on the tapered part, screwing up your part. Now, as we start this, it's going to look really good. Now, your outside diameter is super important as well. It's kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You don't want too big and you don't want too small. If it's too big, it's going to start to look good like this one does, and then it's going to start cutting in just a little bit out each time. And the same goes for if it's too small. All of a sudden, instead of cutting 24 teeth, it's cutting 23. And even at that, it might not match up. Now pay special attention as it's going around. It looks really good right now, doesn't it? However, as it goes around, it starts to get out one step each time, cutting a little bit more and a little bit more. And now, it's kind of looking like dog shit. Yep, this is definitely going into the scrap pile. Oh well, I've got lots more where this came from. This is where I came up with the idea that I should pre-cut the teeth. I'll pre-cut 24 teeth on each one of them, and it's surely going to bite in, right? And stay tuned, because there's another lesson in here as well. Now I'm going to match this up, and everything looks fantastic. However, we have to remember that it's concave as well. And as we drive it forward, the next tooth has to pick it up. Not only here am I cutting it on the wrong part of the tap, however, it's also not picking up the teeth as the next one comes around. So there's two major problems that happen with this. On for try number three. Now, try number three looks pretty decent, but pay special attention to that flat spot there. But this time I'm getting smart. Now, I'm gonna cut a concave in here just by spinning it by hand. To do this again, I would have moved it down to the bottom of the tap to make a smaller hollow. The bottom of the land and the top of the land of the gear will be two different diameters. Now, this might not be the safest thing you could do because it feels a little bit odd that your fingers are this close to something spinning that fast. But what I did notice while I was doing it, holding onto it with my thumb, is as I fed it in, it would start to naturally want to feed. But there was a certain tension. But when you went far enough in, you could feel that it was starting to get ready to grip. The importance of having the concave is, this is a feeding system. So as one tooth is coming out, you want another tooth already engaged at least 25% as the one's exiting. This is what turns it and engages it to the next tooth. Now keep in mind, this does turn out a mediocre part because of that flat you see there. However, I did create another part after because I need it perfect for what I'm using it for. Also remember, this technique of dragging your thumb along it as it's spinning could possibly be dangerous and drag your fingers into everything. So use extreme caution or find another technique that isn't dangerous. Now, let's engage this at Mach 5 and see if it's going to hang in there. Which it does, but I think I'd slow it down next time, probably at about half the speed. Now, because of that flat on there, it starts to reproduce an error. I noticed this right away, and the next time I turned it on, I fed it in really hard and fast. Skipping past that, and not catching up on that flat. Now, let's take it out and have a quick look at it. If you look really close, there's starting to be a duplicate air before I start feeding it in really fast. This is due to the flat spot on it. 
However, with the concave on there, everything seemed to work out good when I cut the aluminum one like this, as seen here. Check out my next video where I do some lost foam casting and turn out some amazing parts.